Welcome to the presentation on the case of price leadership by a dominant firm. This is a specific kind of price leadership that we discuss in the case of an oligopolistic market form. The oligopolist market form is one where we have typically small number of firms that are tending to be interdependent on each other and so therefore their decisions are subject to the behavior of other firms. In this uh, particular case, we are having one particular firm which is enjoying a sizable market share for a particular market segment. As a consequence, because of the fact that there is one particular firm enjoys a sizable market share, it could for perhaps be because of, say for instance, the firm enjoying a greater degree of uh, consumer loyalty because of the fact that it has been present for a longer period of time in the marketplace. So an established brand in a particular segment is likely to enjoy a certain degree of monopoly power because of the extreme consumer loyalty that it enjoys and it is able to fix the price for that particular segment where it happens to be the leader and it is able to fix the price for that particular segment and the other firms since they don't enjoy consumer loyalty they are not able to dictate the price and they behave as price takers and they have to sell whatever they can at the price which is fixed by the firm which is dominant in that particular market segment. So over here we have interdependence in the sense that the, the smaller firms uh, are, have to follow the dominant firm in terms of the price which is dictated by the dominant firm. So let's look at how exactly we can uh, describe the situation of price leadership by a dominant firm. To begin with, we have the price quantity axis over which we will be looking at the decisions taken by the various market players in the context of price leadership by a dominant firm. To begin with, we have the overall market demand curve. So QT is the total quantity demanded, which is a function of the price. In order to describe the context within which we are talking about price leadership, what we have done over here is that we've divided the demand curve into three broad segments. One is the lower segment which is extremely low prices. The other is the middle segment where we have a certain range of prices in the middle and then we have prices which are very very high which are above a certain cutoff price. So these three different portions or segments of the demand curve for the sake of our discussion we can refer to them as the budget segment, the economy segment and the premium segment. The budget segment relates to the demand corresponding to prices below P1. The economy segment corresponds to the demand curve between prices P1 and P2 and then we have the premium segment which is for all prices above P2. Further, we are making an assumption that the dominant firm is the only firm that is operating below price P1. So there is no other firm that is operating at the lower price points. Above P1, what we are having is the case where the dominant firm is, in, is operating but 
other firms are also operating above P1. And finally, we are talking about the premium segment where essentially we are referring to extremely high prices and for this extremely high, pr uh, high price portion of the demand curve, it's only the other firms which are operating above the price P2. So to repeat, we are having the dominant firm operating uh, below P1, but other firms not operating. Between P1 and P2, we have the dominant firm as well as the other firms which are operating. Above P2, we do not have the dominant firm operating, but only the other firms operating. Now let's look at this graphically. As per our discussion, we can now incorporate one more element to the framework that we are developing. The green line is the supply curve of small firms. As we mentioned earlier, the small firms start operating from price P1 and they progressively supply larger and larger quantities from P1 onwards. The supply curve is given by the horizontal summation of their short run marginal cost curves. So we sum up uh, the short run marginal cost curves of the small firms horizontally and we are able to derive the supply curve of the small firms. So as you can observe that below price P1, the quantity supplied by the small firms is zero. As prices rise above P1, the small firms produce larger and larger quantities of the product. At point P2, we observe that the total quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied by the small firms. So below P1, the quantity supplied by the small firms is zero. Above P1, the quantity supplied by the small firms rises and it becomes equal to the quantity demanded, uh, the total quantity demanded at price P2. Above P2, the quantity supplied by the small firms becomes more than the quantity demanded by the marketplace. So given this supply curve of the small firms, the next aspect of our model will be to be able to derive the demand curve for the dominant firm. At any given price, let's assume that the price is Pt. We can find out what is the total quantity demanded which will be corresponding to the total overall market demand curve. And at this price, we also know what is being supplied by the small firms. So the quantity that has been demanded overall at the price Pt is Qt and the quantity that the small firms can supply at this price is Qs. Whatever remains is the quantity that is going to be available for the dominant firm to serve. So therefore Qd which is the quantity that the dominant firm is serving which is part of its own market, which we'll be referring to as the demand curve for the dominant firm. The various quantities that are demanded at different prices for the dominant firm will be derived by subtracting from the total quantity whatever is being supplied by the small firms.
So for example, below price P1, the small firms do not operate. In other words, QS will be equal to zero. And so QD will be equal to QT. Therefore, below P1, the quantity demanded by the dominant firm and the total quantity are the same. As we move above P1, we are having larger and larger quantities being supplied by the small firms. And so therefore, the quantity demanded, which is there for the dominant firm will fall as prices rise above P1 because QS rises with a rise in prices. At price P2, QT and QS are equal. It is an intersection point of QT and QS and at this point therefore QD will be equal to 0. So the demand curve for the dominant firm will be the same as the overall demand curve below P1. Above P1 the demand for the dominant firm will fall until it reaches the value 0 at this point because at this point QT and QS are equal to each other. So let's as a consequence derive the demand curve for the dominant form. So this is what the demand curve for the dominant form looks like. We are having the demand curve being uh, coinciding with the overall demand curve for this portion because the small firms are not operating below this point and above P1 we find that the demand for the dominant firms output declines and it reaches zero at the point where the small firms are able to produce whatever is being demanded by the marketplace. Above this, the small firms are producing more than what the market is demanding. So therefore, we are having this as the basic construct with regard to the price leadership model uh, for a dominant firm. We have the overall demand curve, which is AG. We have the supply curve of the small firms, which is above price P1, the green line. And we have the dominant firms derived demand curve, so which is HFG, this line, and which is derived from after subtracting whatever is being supplied by the small firms from the total quantity that is be demanded. So this is the basic construct with the demand curve for the dominant firm. We can also have the corresponding marginal revenue curve for the dominant firm. So we have the demand curve as well as the marginal revenue curve for the dominant form as well. One more addition to our discussion is the marginal cost curve for the dominant form. The dominant form needs to know its marginal cost curve in order to be able to fix the price since it would ideally want to fix a price where it is able to maximize its profits. So therefore we having the marginal short run marginal cost curve of the dominant firm and we have already derived the or represented the other elements of the, uh, the, the framework that is required to be able to elaborate on the price leadership model by a dominant firm. So given the marginal cost curve for the dominant firm, we also have the marginal revenue curve of the dominant firm and therefore the point of their intersection is the point where 
the dominant firm is going to be able to maximize its profits. Corresponding to this intersection point, we have the quantity that the dominant firm will be selling and corresponding to this quantity, the price at which it is going to be selling, this quantity will be given by the demand curve of the dominant firm. So QD intersects the demand curve of the dominant firm at point K and the price corresponding to point K is P0. The price quantity combination where the dominant firm maximizes its profits is given by P0 and QD. Now since the small firms are not price setters, they are price takers. They have to also sell at the same price which is fixed by the dominant firm. And what is the quantity that they will be selling at this price? The quantity that they will be selling at this price will be given by the point where the price line intersects the supply curve of the small firms. And corresponding to this price, the quantity that is going to be supplied by the small firms is given by QS. The small firms are producing QS at the price P0. Now we have the price that is fixed which is P1 and corresponding to this price we are having the two quantities which is QD which is being sold by the dominant firm and QS which is being sold by the small firms. The sum of both of these is the total quantity that is going to be sold in the marketplace. So this is the distribution of the total demand between the dominant firm and the small firms given that the price is fixed by the dominant firm at P0 where it is able to maximize its profits. So this is the manner in which a dominant firm is able to exercise price leadership in an oligopolistic marketplace. Thank you.